process, having been through it just last year, how does it help having a team that mostly went through Yeah, I mean, I think they uh, obviously they were happy after we won uh, whatever day that was, it was Saturday. Uh, but also, I think they're ready to get back to work and get focused. And I think, you know, that I think that that experience with Trey and Kalk and and uh, Baylor in particular helps. Um, but you know, we still those guys were on the floor a lot uh, Saturday night, and it was you know we got back to the hotel room at whatever 1:30 in the morning. So uh, we're we're going to go really light today and not do much with them. Uh, with no disrespect to UConn, uh, I think they're the best defensive team we played this year. Uh, the numbers would indicate that. I think Houston's one and, and Iowa State's two and Tennessee's three. Um, you know, elite at forcing turnovers, uh, elite at the rim, you know, really uh, a lot of length across that front line. Uh, and then Connect is the first team All-American, and, and uh, Ziegler is, you know, is one of the fastest point guards and most disruptive defensive point guards that we will have seen this year. So we, we've got a lot of work to do uh, before Friday. Yeah, I mean, we had a we we had a we've had a group chat uh, really throughout our time there. Uh, but there was there was a chat right after the selection, and then Coach Holtman came back to the Paul, so he was he was added uh, to it a couple days later. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we were all disappointed in the league being somewhat disrespected in the disrespected in the selection process. Uh, but then I think it flipped pretty quickly to, you know, those the other seven, you know, or eight, I guess it is, supporting the three of us that are in the tournament. So there's been an ongoing uh, conversation between all 11 of us. Um, and then, you know, Danny and Shock and I have one on the side that, uh, you know, we've been going back and forth as well. So really happy that we're well represented in the Sweet 16, and hopefully we can still be well represented when it comes time for the Elite Eight. <coughs> Oh, I don't know. There's a lot of them. Uh, you know, I, I I can't think of one in particular that stood out. Um, a lot of people very excited. Obviously, it was a you know it was a great win for our program. But just the way it happened, it looked like we were dead in the water, and you know found a way to get it to overtime, and then looked like we had it at the end of the first overtime, and then they hit a big shot, much like we did at the end of regulation. Uh, but you know, it was uh, you know. A lot of people told me where they were and how much fun they were having when they watched the game. Yeah, I mean, I th that one kind of made the hair stand up on the back of your neck a little bit. Uh, just the, the reaction from, you know, behind the bench where all of our fans were. And, um, you know, I think that that play probably took any win that was left in Oregon sales was gone after that. Uh, just. Uh, was a real, you know, got it, momentum totally on our side even after the back-to-back -back threes by uh, Steven and Ryan. Uh, but Jason played terrific. I couldn't be uh, more proud of him. Well, we're, you know, you start with it. I, I've found in my 35 years, I finally figured it out. It's very difficult to recruit a selfish person and make him an unselfish basketball player. So we just attempt to recruit unselfish people to start with. And you, you can tell by the way you know, they interact with their teammates, whether it's a high school or AU, the way they treat their parents or their siblings. Uh, you get a pretty good feel for what, what they're about as a person uh, before they ever walk foot on campus. Uh, but, and then I also think it helps. Jason comes as a, in as a red shirt last year and he he watches how you know Baylor and Trey and Ryan and you know guys that all want to play in the NBA how they they're okay passing the ball to somebody else and and then watching him celebrate each other's success. I think that's a big part of the learning curve when you're young is like hey you know what Trey's as excited when Baylor makes a play as he is when he makes a play himself and um, I think that leadership carries over to these younger guys and then hopefully uh, you know when Jason's in that position he's impacting the young people in our program. Yeah, we, we've had a few fur, foolish turnovers in, in both of the games we played in, and now we're going to see a team that really thrives on turnovers. I think that's 
you know, every game's a little bit different in terms of what you really have to focus on and what we think are the keys for us to have success. And I think taking care of the basketball against Tennessee is, is one. And then, you know, one A is battling on the defensive glass because they're, they're elite attacking the offensive glass as well. But, you know, you just try to clean up some of the timing, some of the, you know, things that maybe were a little bit off in the two games you played. Um, and most importantly, you want to you want to get to 10 o'clock Friday night healthy. Does three levels, does that include making layups? Because he's, <laughs> as I talked to him the other night, I mean, what the hell's going on? Like, right hand, left hand, he, he yacked them both. Uh, no, he's been, uh, he's been terrific. Uh, and it's been fun to watch his progress, you know. His improvement from the day he walked on campus to where he's at now for a guy that was 21 years old, 22 years old when he got here, is really, really impressive. A lot of that growth, a lot of times, oftentimes happens as a freshman and sophomore when you're a little bit younger. Uh, but he's really, he's really gone to work and gotten better. And, you know, to think, you know, we put him on Kuznar to start the game the other night. Uh, he got a quick foul the first possession, so we, we flipped Trey over on him. But I think that speaks to his development. You know, if, if you would have told him the first day was on Creighton campus that he was going to be guarding the other team's best player to go to the Sweet 16, he probably have told you you're crazy. Uh, but that just speaks to his work. And uh, obviously, he's very confident. He plays the game in a very confident manner, but he's also backed it up with a lot of hard work. Yeah, he had an okay player then. I think his name was Durant. Yeah, he was, he was all right. And I think Coach Barnes's philosophy was get give the ball to Durant and get the hell out of the way. It was brilliant. Uh, but you know, Rick and I have been friends for a long time, and I've always respected the job he does and and how he does it, and you know what he's done at Tennessee during his tenure there is really incredible and has built has built a machine defensively especially. Uh, we'll have staff members that are working on Gonzaga and Purdue, just like we did last week with Oregon and South Carolina. But we won't talk about either one of those uh, until we're for if we're fortunate enough to get by, by Tennessee. We'll we'll worry about that. But yeah, I mean, I followed R two when I have a chance late at night. Their games are on, you know, late a lot, and we've re we've exchanged a few text messages during the course of the year. So uh, obviously, he's had a great year. I thought he uh, I thought in the game last week, I thought he. For only taking five or six shots, he controlled the game and was the best player on the floor without really taking a shot. Yeah, Steven's been terrific. He, you know, obviously he's worked really hard and worked through a tough stretch earlier this season when he wasn't shooting the basketball great. Uh, but that's that's a credit to him and his approach and his confidence in himself. And again, like Baylor, that confidence comes from a lot of hard work. It's not by chance. You know, you don't, those shots that he hit late in that game that, that helped you know, get us that victory, those are shots he's practiced thousands and thousands and thousands of times. So um, you know, he's, he's come into a difficult situation with a lot of expectations, and he's performed really well. Execution is where it starts. And, you know, obviously, as a staff, we try to look for uh, you know, some, some holes or some weaknesses in our other team that we think we can exploit, uh, that we can draw up out of a timeout. Most of them, virtually all of them, we've worked on in practice. And so, you know, there are plays you run, you, you, you practice all year long and you never use. You know, the lob play to Kalkbrenner against his own, we've practiced that thing, you know, a hundred times this year, but we've never ran it in a game. And to have it executed to perfection, uh, you know, it's one thing to have the play that you think is going to work. It's another thing to have Baylor shoot a, you know, an air ball off the side of the rim from 30 feet and have Kalk time it great and, and dunk it. Uh, but we spend a lot of time in that. We think it's, you know, it's kind of the special teams part of, of basketball, side out of bounds, out of bounds under, after timeouts. You know, those, those areas can really uh, change the direction of a game. I think it helped us big time. You know, I, you know, we, 
we at least had as many people there as Akron, and they had a short drive, and then uh, uh, we certainly outdrew Oregon. Uh, so, you know, I, I thought the building was loud, and it certainly had an impact in the game. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Texas was behind eight to ten a lot of that game, and then kind of got back in it. They hit some shots from three, and um, you know, and 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 Coach Terry worked for Coach Barnes, so I think he probably knew their offense a little bit better than most of us do. So I think he was able to take some stuff away that uh, other teams haven't. Um, but you know, it's this will be a heck of a challenge for us. But um, you know, when you get to this point in the season, everybody you play is elite. Everybody's had. Uh, a terrific year and, and you know Tennessee I felt even back to October and November talking to NBA scouts that kind of make the rounds through all the teams in the country um, you know Tennessee was one of the first teams that came out of their mouth in October as a team that's really good and um, you know I see why they feel that way thank you there's a big tall one right behind you he's a three-point shooter evidently <laughs>